after you make that big jump and you say, I'm going to, in a sense, move away from something that I've, I've spent a lot of my career being really good at. Yeah. And managing these very large plans with very large dollar signs attached to them. What happened next? It was hard. It's hard. I think personally, right? Like it was. This is when my oldest child is about to enter kindergarten, and so we're having these conversations about where our children will go. So on a personal level, what's happening is I am coming to grips with this moral dilemma, where I've spent ten years of my life in the homes of families who live in neighborhoods that are not like mine, mm -hmm. who don't have the financial security or the same skin color as I do. And I'm selling them on a school that I'm sure is going to be awesome for their kids. Mm -hmm. And then I look at those same schools for my own kid and I hear myself on the phone with friends running these schools saying, what if we picked our kids up early instead of staying till five at the school? And, and just like seeing this reality of my own privilege play out and starting to understand, yeah, you have been, in the words of Lisa Delpit, who wrote a fascinating book called Other People's Children, mm -hmm. like, I have been teaching other people's children. And now it became real in a totally different way. And I have my own children, and I want something slightly different for them. And then that, like, moral, that reality of, like, this is your privilege, mm. driving not just how you interact with the world, but everything you think about the people that you serve. And you had never had to confront it in that Not in that way. Or... I think not until it was about my own kids. There, there are so many ways to trick yourself into thinking that you're doing good work. And that you're, and you're getting affirmed that you're doing good work. People but are telling you. That it's that just there's collateral impact that you don't see. Right? Sure. There, there's the benefit to the children that are in your school that you're serving, and they are getting something better. But there are the unhidden, there are the hidden costs. There are the opportunity costs of that. There's, and this is what structural racism is so good at. It is hiding us from the structural patterns that are so well ingrained that they keep us from really changing the structural stuff. And so you, after having spent a large portion of your career in education, were for the first time being confronted with absolutely options that the thing that you had been selling wasn't necessarily the thing that you wanted to send your own, your own children to. Right, and, and so, so we, we preach, we continue to preach choice mm -hmm. and accountability as the pillars, just for example, of the charter movement. And I still believe in those things. I sure. believe in choice. What I realized was that I was playing a sort of Henry Ford game. You know, there's the saying when Henry Ford was launching the Model T to get the cost of the car down, he had to he had to standardize many things. And so he'd say, sure. you have any color you want as long as it's black. As long as it's black. And so, because they saved paint, you know, the yeah. amount of money that Ford could save on not stocking other colors of paint, like that's that that was sort of what was innovative for him. And we're in that same trap. Right, Where everything like was so standard. Innovation, yeah, no doubt. Like the and and the metaphor is intentional. I'm choosing this metaphor intentionally, right? Sure. Because you know the conveyor belt, the 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 basic manufacturing construct of Ford and others who who drove change in the industrial age was about lowering costs and efficiency. Mm -hmm. And we truly have created a system based on the idea that factories and schools should look the same. An output model. Correct. Input's an output. Absolutely, right? And, it, you know, and, and so I was part of that tradition. Mm -hmm. I was just selling a modern version of that. Again, this is not to take away that a particular child might benefit from that school. Sure. But when it transforms into... And when it comes from a space of like, I know all, and I am the expert. Who's enacting and, it. And, and I'm choosing to not let you in, and I'm keeping the power and providing the choice to you. Sure. Like that's when it becomes, if not checked and challenged, sinister, because you're preaching choice, but you're not really delivering it.